from Nets head coach Steve Nash with the media, including our Michael Grady. Coach, just can you give us an idea of what you liked uh, just from James Harden's performance out there and what it was like incorporating them into everything that you guys did today? Well, he's he stuffed the stat sheet. Um, wow, almost a quadruple double. But uh, I mean, obviously, James is is a brilliant basketball player, and we got to incorporate him, and find a way to make this thing gel, and put him in a position to do what he does, and for him to make each of our guys better. Um, but he, you know, got to the line 15 times. He made threes. You know, I don't, 12 rebounds, 14 assists, four steals. Um, you know, he's, we know what he is. He's, he's a, a world-class basketball player. So uh, we'll continue to build and get better and uh, try to figure this out where everyone is, uh, you know, a threat and we make each other better. Michael Grady with Yes Network. And Coach, in what ways did James exceed your expectations in a debut? Well, I just think, you know, he, he he's had a, Obviously, a very strange start to the season, stop-start year. He's not in best in his best condition yet. Um, so for him to do as many things as he did on the basketball floor tonight was uh, was incredible. And um, you know, it's great to get one under his belt, and for him to kind of you know feel uh, his teammates in the building, and um, and we'll just keep building. But he was you know incredible for for a guy who, like I said, is, is just trying to get himself in shape. And the guys, you know, around him and guys making plays, Bruce Brown, the, the big three late, you know, there's a lot of going to be a lot of talk about, you know, Kyrie, Kevin and James. But, you know, how important are those are those other guys on the roster? Well, you know, it can't just be, you know, uh, your top guy, your top two, your top three guys. You know, you got to play team basketball. Everyone's got to be a threat. Everyone's got to play their role, know their role. And so those are things we have to figure out. But, uh, you know, I thought I was exceptional tonight, you know. You know, Joe played well, Bruce played well, you know, Jeff gave us some important veteran experience and you, know, you go down the line and guys contributed. So it was, uh, you know, I think a, a game that could have gone the other way. You know, we we were, you know, we, we it took us a while to find it and to, to pull away. But, um, you know, it wasn't clean at all. It, it wasn't easy. And, but, you know, that's a tribute to their team. And uh, but we got a lot to, to build on. Brian Lewis with the New York Post. Hey, Steve. It's obvious uh, it's only one game, a uh, short sample size. But, I mean, when James says, well, you know, I'm going to facilitate and I'm going to pass and I'm going to make my teammate better and do all those things, um, is it different from saying it's actually going out and doing it? How encouraging was it for you to see the way he threaded passes, the way he rebounded, the way he did all of those things that he was saying he was going to yeah, I mean, I can't say I'm surprised. We, we've had a pretty big sample size of him doing that uh, the last six to whatever however many years he's been in the league. But um, it's still, it's not easy. You know, like we said, he's not in his best condition yet. Uh, he's joined a new group, um, you know, with basically no practice time and figured it out on the fly. So, you know, I think, uh, you know, he had a bunch of turnovers tonight that are just because he's new to the, the team and group, and you're thrown out there in an NBA game where the other team's an excellent coach basketball team, and they're going to scheme, and they're going to make it difficult. And so those types of things are, are, are normal. But all the things he did accomplish on the floor were incredible for his first evening. Malika Andrews with ESPN. Hey, Steve, I have two for you. First, when you were watching from the sidelines, could you see, oh, yes, I see how Kyrie's going to fit in here. Boom, it's going to be easy. Or were you looking at it saying, okay, maybe there's some things that we're going to have to grow and adjust to to fit him in here too? I think we're going to have to continually find how it all works to its best level to the most effective and efficient standard. But, you know, like throwing Kyrie in the mix makes us better. It, you know, it's, it's, not a, it's a good problem to have trying to figure out you know what where they can coexist to the to their highest level and standard so i think it takes time i think um it's going to be an adjustment for everyone but it's an incredible problem to have and something that i think we'll relish uh, trying to decipher and secondly there is a, a moment where you know kevin kicks out to to bruce brown you have james harden all smiles was this 
I mean, where did this rank in terms of fun that you've had coaching a game this year? Because it sure looked like the players were enjoying themselves. Yeah, I think everyone was excited. You know, it's obviously you bring a player of, of James caliber and his excitement to be here, and everyone was excited. And you know, it's been a it's been a fun few days. I mean, as far as uh, the performance, uh, gosh, my head is spinning. Who did we play three nights ago? No, three three games ago at home, a, a very good team, uh, Denver. We played Denver. That was a fun evening. We played in New York and had a, an excellent short staff game where guys moved the ball, played. 122 to 115, the final as we welcome you to the Brooklyn Nets post game show. Ryan Rucco with you live from Barclays Center, joined by Richard Jefferson, who is at his home in Los Angeles. I mean, Richard. Harden, Durant, we know it's a Stars League, and wow, was their performance special tonight. What stood out most to you about the win in Harden's debut? Congratulations, Nets fans. Congratulations. Uh, you, you don't know how long these moments last. You don't know when they come and when they go. But what stood out to me is that this team, when healthy, is going to be a problem. Now, do they have every single thing that is needed in order to be considered, you know, the, the favorite or a, a team that's guaranteed to go to the finals? No, they have work to do. But, boy, when I tell you that the entire league looking around seeing James Harden all of a sudden wake up and get 14 assists in his debut, to see Kevin Durant go for 42. And this is what I like. Kevin Durant is a scorer. Kyrie Irving, even though he is a point guard, is also a scorer. But what you know with James Harden is that he has led the league in assists. So he knows how to get himself involved. He knows how to get some teammates involved. So when everyone's talking about, okay, well, who's going to handle the ball? Who's going to do this? I think James Harden really running that point and allowing Kyrie and KD to be just dominant scorers and him being the person that kind of navigates his game, I think that could be a really real problem well i mean no question about it and richard i think that was one of the things that stood out most right first few possessions out of the gate harden was all about distributing you know breaking down his performance tonight as we take a look richard what you see from james harden well, uh, again, that's what I was looking at. I was looking and I, I said the role players and I, I love what Joe Harris did. I love seeing Bruce Brown, that play late in the game where it was Harden to Durant. Then all of a sudden, Durant makes the right play and throws it to a wide open Bruce Brown. Bruce, those are the guys that have to knock down shots when you look at championship teams. It's the Bruce Brown. It's the Joe Harris because you know the stars are going to get attention. And with James Harden, Kyrie, these are guys that entire defenses, a team spends their entire practice and, and, and focus. How do we stop James Harden? How do we stop Kevin Durant? When they were on individual teams, now you have all three of them on the same team. It's going to be nearly impossible. They are going to be getting more single coverage than they have ever had. For Kevin Durant, a guy that played with the Splash Brothers, now all of a sudden he's got the uh, a very, very similar spacing because you have so many quality players. And James Harden, again, it just goes down to his assist. His assists are the things that are going to make this team run. Well, 32 points, 14 assists, 12 rebounds. You add in four steals as well. Did have nine turnovers. And I like that that was one of the first things he brought up to Michael Grady in his post-game interview saying, ah, I got to clean up the turnovers. But, Richard, I, I think what was so striking, and, and we've already talked about it some, was, you know, people have seen James Harden play a certain way in Houston over the last couple of years. And so there have been conversations about, oh, you know, dribbling the air out of the basketball. How are they going to continue to get everyone involved? But – these players wanted this, which obviously shows their inclination to want to do whatever they have to to win. And James Harden has shown that ability to play make. And it's not just that he has the skills to do it, Richard. There's the buy-in now to not play the way he was in Houston and to access more of those playmaking abilities. And we saw that already in game one. Ryan, I 100% agree with you. What you have to do is you have to look around the league sometimes. And James Harden has led the league in assists. And then as his team and the dynamic of his team started to change, he then started to be like, okay, well, I'm going to go and average 34 points a game. Look at a guy like LeBron James. You add Anthony Davis on his team, and what does he do? Just at 10 a game. I really think that James Harden, even though we're in the very beginning of the season, could lead the league in assists if he chooses to play that way. And so when you ask James, like, James, what is your goal? 
Sometimes it's to be the leading scorer. Sometimes it's to be the MVP. These guys that are on this tier, when you talk about Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving and James Harden and LeBron James, they can adjust their game. It's all a matter about what they want to do on the basketball floor. So if you tell James, like, James, we need you to average 25 and 10 or we need to average 26 and 11, uh, he can go and do that and pretty much with ease, especially with the arsenal around him. So I, I think this was a quick message to everyone on this team, everyone in this league, that, look, they're going to be able to move the ball. They're going to be able to score. The next step that we're going to be talking about is how do they play that high-level team defense that's going to be needed when you're talking about the postseason. You know, Richard, during the game, I thought Sarah had a, a, a very poignant and simultaneously funny remark when she said, it feels like Kevin Durant is a veteran here now with all the attention on James Harden, the newcomer, and it sort of does, but you watch the performance tonight and you realize...